What is up everybody and welcome to FLW video. So in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the top 10 non-legendary Pokemon that are worth powering up to level 50 in Pokemon Go. Once you start powering up a Pokemon past level 40, you are going to have to have XL candies. And of course, there are several ways to obtain XL candies, but when you have the conversation of non-legendary Pokemon versus legendary Pokemon, it becomes extremely expensive and very limited for legendary Pokemon. For example, you could get XL candies from walking your Pokemon, but with legendaries, it requires 20 kilometers to get a single XL candy, so that's pretty much out of the options unless you cheat and use to fit or something like that. But regardless of that, you're going to have to use those legendaries and obtain them in raids. But you're at the mercy of those Pokemon showing up in raids. And then when they do, they're there for what? A week? Two weeks? And it's going to cost you around $70 to get yourself that legendary Pokemon. And then maybe if you use those free raid passes, you can knock it down a little bit. But the point in this video is legendary Pokemon, getting them powered up with Excel candies up to level 50 is way more expensive than these non-legendary options. So this is going to be kind of the budget and maybe considering powering up these Pokemon up to level 50 instead of those legendaries and just keeping the legendaries at level 40. But anyways, I hope this video does provide a lot of value to you. If it does, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. It takes a lot of effort to put this video together. And if you do enjoy it, I want to see the second episode of this where I talk about legendary Pokemon, despite their cost, are easily worth it to power it up. Definitely let me know in that comment section below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. So many people in my comment section have been asking me to make a video about this and I wanted to go ahead and mention that Pokemon Go Hub actually wrote an article about this so I want to mention that and put it in the description. It was seriously a great read and it really pushed me to go ahead and make this video now as far as the relevance is concerned. So let's go ahead and dive into this list. I think up first a good Pokemon to mention is Chandelure. It's not very often that you have a dual type Pokemon that's dominant from two of those typings which is incredible for Chandelure and it gives you a ton of value. And just think about this, maybe we haven't had access to Chandelure and getting XL candies yet, but once a, an event like Halloween comes around, you can bet that Chandelure is going to easily be one of the top featured Pokemon of an event like that, and all of a sudden you've got yourself access to 296 XL candies, and you can go ahead and power one up for free assuming it isn't locked in raids or something like that, then it gets taken out of the window completely. But as far as this Pokemon stats are concerned, you can go ahead and take a look at that attacks at 271. That is a solid option. So when we go up against a Cresselia, if we go ahead and look at these Pokemon, they are all at level 50, by the way. We can see a Pokemon like Gengar and Chandelure performing the best outside of those non-shadow options. And of course, in this particular case, Gengar does perform a little bit better, but it almost has twice the number of feints. And then of course, with Chandelure taking everything into context, Chandelure is also one of the top fire type attackers and Gengar, it doesn't perform well at anything else besides the ghost typing, which is why I decided to put Chandelure uh, featured on this list. But it is important to mention that Gengar is also a solid alternative it's just going to be limited to the ghost typing. So that's uh, going to be the thing that I want to go ahead and mention here. So of course, if we go ahead and move over to that fire typing, we can see that a Pokemon like Chandelure is in at that eighth position, only being beat by a couple of shadows, megas, legendaries, that sort of thing. And then Darmanitan, shout out to Darmanitan here. I think that Darmanitan is in a very similar situation as what we talked about with Gengar from the ghost typing. Where Darmanitan being made available for the 5th anniversary spawns, it's going to be accessible. So it does make sense at least for now, but then you've got the Zen mode that could end up being even more dominant. We're just going to have to wait for the moveset here. So I think it is a great alternative, especially for now until a Pokemon like Chandelure becomes more available in the wild now that the XL candies are available. So let's go ahead and dive into the next Pokemon. We've got Garchomp. So Garchomp has a lot of value because it's going to be one of the best Pokemon that you can get from two different typings as far as non-legendaries are concerned. Now from the Dragon typing, you've got Garchomp competing against a lot of legendary Pokemon that have that Dragon typing. So it drops in performance a little bit, but if you were to go ahead and power up your Garchomp up to level 50 and you're competing against those other level 40 uh, legendary Pokemon, I think it can compete with it, potentially do a little better. And then of course Garchomp from the ground typing, that's going to be the main focus of this. 
we've got a pretty good attack set here and just in general just a solid set of stats Garchomp also is going to have a mega evolution later on so you've got some value out of that but if we go up against a Raikou you can see that we've got some incredible options here like a Shadow Mamoswine, Excadrill and then finally a Pokemon like Garchomp here and it's just a little bit of a toss up here of course Excadrill performs a little better on time to win but it does faint so much more often so I do think that Excadrill is a great alternative to Garchomp but with Garchomp being good at two types I think it deserves a win over Excadrill just generally speaking and then Shadow Mamoswine also a bit of a shout out we're going to be talking about Mamoswine very shortly just keep this in the back of your mind as far as a ground type attacker is concerned but these Pokemon are just so incredibly good uh, versus those level 50s and so I do think that they are at least worth mentioning and I will put them on the final tier list at the end uh, including all of those alternative options so of course we did mention the Mamoswine there and more specifically the Shadow Mamoswine Shadow Mamoswine is just such a solid option it becomes one of the top ground type attackers with that shadow variation and then from the ice typing go ahead and check this out we've got shadow mamoswine taking over that number one spot followed by just the regular mamoswine in at that number six spot overall and then of course a little bit of a shout out to that galarian darmanitan but because it's it's been locked in eggs and stuff at down at level 20 i think it would make more sense to focus on uh, the mamoswine potentially getting it up at level 35 out in the wild that would be just absolutely ideal if you're wanting to focus on the regular mamoswine but then of course focusing on shadow it is uh pretty common as far as the uh raids are or as far as the team rocket is concerned so i do think that shadow mamoswine is a solid option more long term for this pokemon so the shadow easily over doing just the regular form but you need the regular form to potentially get as many xl candies as you can so these two are gonna definitely go hand in hand and i think mamoswine is a solid option for a non-legendary so of course we can go ahead and move on we've got the pokemon rampardos now i haven't really heard much from rampardos or, or really talked about this pokemon in in such a long time it feels like but if you check this out that attack set of 295 is easily the reason why we are talking about this pokemon today but of course, if you go ahead and check out Rampardos' performance, it's in at that number one position, even taking over a Shadow Tyranitar. We will be talking about Shadow Tyranitar at the very end. I'll, I'll include it. Uh, Shadow Tyranitar is such a solid Pokemon from the Rock typing and then also the Dark typing, but it's technically not number one uh, from any particular type it's solid though so huge shout out to shadow tyranitar i'm not going to feature it as a specific pokemon because it doesn't get number one in anything but i do think it is worth mentioning and then of course the regular tyranitar down to the number seven will eventually get itself access to a mega evolution so future value of this mega or this tyranitar is easily looking good but as far as rampardos is concerned it's the number one rock type attacker and powering it up to level 50 you're going to get some major performance out of this pokemon and then we can go ahead and move on to a couple of them i'm going to actually do both of these at once because they are super effective against some of the same types. so i think it makes a lot of sense to go ahead and talk about both of these here we've got metagross now metagross is easily top tier option especially if you can get that shadow variation but just metagross in general and then getting yourself the exclusive move of meteor mash it's such a good pokemon just generally speaking so i think metagross is easily at the top of the list when you are talking about the top non-legendary pokemon worth powering up to level 50 and machamp is no slouch either and of course with machamp competing against those fighting types there's not a lot of fighting type legendary pokemon uh, in this game so machamp doesn't have too many things to compete against maybe something like a mega lucario at some point in time once that ends up getting added in but if you go ahead and take a look at the raid performance versus a reg ice you can see that shadow metagross is in here and then of course you got that shadow machamp if you were to pick one i think shadow machamp is going to be the better option compared to just the regular machamp it drops way too much in that performance unlike metagross you can see metagross in here at that 11th position and then of course you've got the the shadow metagross in here at the number two and then a bit of a shout out to lucario here because the lucario regular form is beating the shadow machamp so i'm really putting a heavy emphasis on shadow machamp out of the two but of course 
you need to get yourself access to the XL Candy any way possible and catching just those regular Machops is going to be a way to do it. And then of course, going up against uh, Team Go Rocket, getting yourself that Shadow Machamp is easily gonna be the way to go long term. I love having myself that Shadow Machamp. And I think it is a solid investment and is worth powering up to level 50. And then finally, we've got Roserade. Now, a little bit unfortunate situation. What ended up happening was I was over at pokebattler.com and I was gonna run up against like a Swampert and do a couple of other things. And the website just kind of stopped working while I was working on making this video, which is a little bit unfortunate. So I can't showcase the raids to kind of back up this point, but I do want to go ahead and mention that Roserade is a very good option from the grass typing as well as the poison typing. It has some pretty good move sets as well to kind of pair up with it. And then if you go ahead and take a look at the relative ranking, the attack stat comparison, it's just good compared to those other types especially that attack stat and then the defense stat is looking pretty good as well so roserade does have some value because it's good from two different typings like i said i don't i couldn't showcase the raids because the website was just acting funny and messing up but i wanted to make sure that roserade at least got mentioned in this episode so as far as the overall tier list is concerned i wanted to go ahead and put this on the screen so you can kind of take a look and of course take away a screenshot so you can kind of keep it in the back of your mind these are going to be the top non-legendary options that are worth powering up to level 50, at least in my mind. You just kind of have to wait for an event, whether that's a community day, whether it's something themed, something like Halloween, for example, and then of course that being uh, good for Chandelure. Any type of event that causes these Pokemon to spawn, I would really go hard, absolutely as hard as you can to get as many XLs as you can to be able to power these up to level 50. But of course, I would love to know what you think about this in the comment section below. Was there a Pokemon that I missed that you think is worth mentioning? Of course, there are plenty of alternatives, but is there just an absolute top option that I missed? Are there other ones that you are considering? Anything and everything, let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. And I will see you next time, but not without giving a huge shout out to the supporters over at Patreon. Thank you so much. We are gearing up for Pokemon Go Fest, coordinating raids, very excited about that. We're talking Pokemon Go and of course so much more. So if you're interested in supporting the channel and connecting with other Pokemon Go players, make sure to check out the Patreon page in the description below and I will see you next time.